Hello, this is getting started with SharePoint Framework Tutorial 5, jQuery UI Accordion web part. This is one of those tutorials which are available from the dev.ofs.com slash SharePoint and you can choose if you want to follow up on the tutorials uh, watching or reading the, the written format or watching the videos and going steps uh, one by one. This tutorial 5 is concentrated on how to use external uh, third-party JavaScript libraries which are added on the client-side web part after you created the solution. And we can use the jQuery UI uh, accordion as the example for doing so. So let's actually move directly to the, uh, to the tutorial itself. So let's start by the tutorial uh, for creating uh, a new library uh, which is going to host our uh, jQuery web part. So I'm going to actually go to my jQuery web part which is now created uh, in my development box. And, and the next thing what I want to do is that I want to actually create uh, a new uh, web part. So I'm going to start the Yeoman templating um, template engine and then I, we can actually fill up some of the default settings for the web part and get the basic uh, scaffolding to actually happen. So uh, let's use the, the, uh, the basic, uh, the, the default name uh, as the name of the jQuery uh, web part. So that's absolutely fine for us. We're going to use this particular folder because we are already in the jQuery web part folder. The name of the web part, uh, let's call this one uh, jQuery because it's not really a hello world. There's already a separate tutorials for that. And the description uh, could be something like jQuery uh, web part and press enter on that one. Because we want to reference uh, jQuery UI and jQuery within a web part. And there's no default uh, template available for that one. We're going to use the no JavaScript web framework. And the, the fact that there's no default template, it's not actually that big of a deal because you can absolutely also uh, reference React and Knockout manually even though you are uh, selecting the no JavaScript web framework uh, as the starting point of your web part. And in future you might see additional templates uh, available but like mentioned they don't actually restrict anything they're just a kind of a default hello world web part uh, after scaffolding uh, which you anyway need to get rid of uh, when you start actually developing production ready code. Now, let's actually choose the Node JavaScript Web Framework, and this is going to start creation or scaffolding of your solution. This is going to take a while, so we're going to pause the video at this point and continue whenever the, the web part creation is completed. Good. Now our web part has been scaffolded, and we can actually start to code uh, Visual Studio Code by, by writing here code and a, and a dot, and that's going to start the Visual Studio Code on that particular folder. Before we actually start doing any modifications in the Visual Studio Code side, let's add jQuery and jQuery UI uh, to be available within this uh, solution as well. So I'm going to run npm install test test save uh, and jQuery. And this is going to essentially install the jQuery uh, and the dash dash save means that it's actually adding the entry for jQuery dependency in the package JSON file in the solution. So if somebody else is pulling down uh, the sample, uh, they can do npm install and then the package, all of the dependencies defined in the package JSON are installed as well. And because we're going to use the jQuery UI, let's actually install that one as well. jQuery UI. <clears throat> Now, because we're using TypeScript, uh, we want to actually have that uh, intelligence and types available within our development. Uh, we also want to install some additional things. So whenever the jQuery UI is available, there we go. And we kind of also install, let me actually clear the page. We kind of install the types for jQuery and jQuery UI as well. So let me execute here npm install, uh, that's the save and types slash jQuery. And that's going to then install the jQuery types to be available within the solution as well. And we're going to do the same for the jQuery UI. So that we can more easily and efficiently do development in TypeScript. Uh, and that's going to be highly helpful when, when, especially when your web part solution structures are uh, getting bigger and bigger. Uh, like using the TypeScript is really a great way of making sure that your code is more reliable and you can more easily update uh, and maintain your code. Good. Now, 
let's actually uh, open up to the Visual Studio code. So I'm going to flip to Visual Studio code side, just quickly pinpointing since, since we did uh, that dash dash save, uh, we can actually see the package dependencies uh, in here uh, as a jQuery and jQuery UI. So we're going to use those within our solution as well. Now, let's actually go to the config and, and open up the config JSON file. And this is where we can actually define uh, external JavaScript libraries, which we want to reference externally or dynamically uh, from an external location. So let's actually update uh, our setup slightly um, because we want to reference uh, those jQuery and jQuery UI here inside of the, the externals uh, entry. So I'm going to actually copy paste that information into externals uh, because those are being used from there. Let's actually do some adjustments. Here we go. So it looks uh, more easily understandable. So this way uh, we can actually use the jQuery uh, or we have defined them as an external libraries which are available for us, uh, which we're going to use in the implementation. Now let's open up the, the source code and let's do something relatively simple. So we're going to open up uh, the web part uh, location. So web parts uh, jQuery folder. And then we're going to actually create uh, a new file here. And let's call that my accordion, accordion uh, template TS. And that, that's the one uh, from where we will copy the information from the tutorial. So I'm going to just copy paste uh, the code example from the tutorials and let's have a look on what I'm actually doing here. So uh, it's just a, a accordion template which is exported as a default from this particular file uh, and it's essentially an HTML template for us to consume within the client-side web part. Now to be able to use this in our client-side web part uh, we obviously need to import this in our JavaScript file. So let me open up the jQuery web part TS file and add an import for that one as well. So we are importing that my accordion template uh, as part of the uh, as part of the web part. And then we also want to uh, import uh, jQuery and jQuery UI so we can get to uh, so we're able to use those within our code. So importing jQuery from jQuery and import jQuery UI as well. And then we want to reference jQuery UI CSS. So how do we do that? We we kind of use an SP component loader, so which we will then use to reference on that external library, and to be able to again use the the SP loader uh, or SP component loader, we need to import that to our web part. So let's add that import to our web part, and this is coming from one of these native out of the box libraries from Microsoft related on SharePoint uh, framework. Let me slightly adjust the code. We don't actually need to be that visible or I'll get the, the folder structure that visible so we can see the code more efficiently. Now, we want to reference CSS. We want to make sure that the CSS is available within the page. So we need to actually reference that component loader and we need to reference that in the constructor of the web part. Um, and here we go. Uh, we have actually done the constructor of the web part and we're referencing an external CSS, jQuery UI CSS, as part of the, the web part itself. And then uh, what we want to do is completely uh, modify the, the render logic. So we're not actually that interested about uh, this basic rendering. Uh, we want to completely change that basic rendering. So let's actually get rid of the, the whole basic setup and replace that one uh, with my accordion template and template HTML was something what we returned from that my accordion template. And then uh, we want to configure some of the jQuery UI accordion options. Um, so let's actually get that one included there as well. So we I'm going to copy that directly from the tutorial code and let's have a look on what we have here. So we have the accordion options, jQuery accordion options, uh, animate is true, collapse false, icons are going to be those two and then we can do jQuery accordion and set those accordion options in to this and DOM element. So we essentially we're adding that uh, attribute there as well. And 
that's it uh, for actually getting the jQuery UI to work together with, uh, the, with the client side web part. So we're not actually loading any dynamic data and just to pinpoint that one, we are just showing the static data from the template for time being, which was the template HTML within our implementation. So if you open up the implementation, you can see that we are getting the template HTML uh, as the from the my accordion template. So let's have a look on this one in practice uh, when we start this. So if we do call up serve, it's going to start uh, again uh, the, the browser and it's going to open up this web part in a local workbench um, and we can see how our implementation succeeded or not succeeded. Most likely in this case it was completely fine. So if we go to our local workbench and we add our jQuery web part in, we can actually see the jQuery UI accordion implementation here. Like mentioned, in this case the data is static, so we're not loading that one from anywhere. But you could just as well combine this to the tutorial 1 and 2, or explicitly 2, to get the data from SharePoint as well. So you're able to then have a dynamic data within the tutorials. But that's all we're going to do within this tutorial. The whole point was to reference and show you how you can reference jQuery and jQuery UI and use them within your client-side web parts. And please have a look and test uh, yourself as well uh, and do some development on SharePoint framework.